So we're here at the Mobile World Congress 2019. Uh, hi, so what's the latest? Hi, well, uh, ML is everywhere, 5G is everywhere, and 5G and ML enabled devices are just becoming more and more real. Of, uh, of course, you do see a lot of hype, but what's amazed me really is the uh, amount of reality behind the announcements, and we're seeing more and more uh, ML enabled, uh, machine learning enabled devices, particularly in the small microcontroller world, uh, that is just taking off massively. So it's possible to do AI in microcontrollers? Yes, so uh, we've already uh, released uh, the compute library for Cortex-M based microcontrollers. It's called Simsys NN, and there's been massive take up of that. And we see that just about everybody is using that. However, about a week ago, one of the things we released was uh, something called Helium, which is the V8.1M instruction set architecture extensions. So we're making a whole bunch of instruction set architecture extensions available on Cortex-M based microcontrollers uh, to improve machine learning processing. And, it, and it's really fantastic. We're looking at 15x improvement in, up to 15x performance improvement on machine learning workloads and about 5x improvement on more traditional DSP type workloads. And we feel that this is really going to power the revolution of machine learning based smart endpoint devices. So is this a... Uh, um is this an IP or is open source uh, accelerating algorithms? So or? two things, the software available is open source, it's software which uh, we have seen massive numbers of downloads on. Uh, the V8.1M instruction set architecture is of course IP that we will be delivering in future releases of uh, Cortex M based microcontrollers. And the uh, V8M uh, has a lot of stuff doing with that, that so accelerates the, the AI even more than the yes. regular microcontrollers? So we've added a bunch of uh, vector extension instructions to enable the sort of complex matrix arithmetic that you see very prevalent in machine learning workloads, particularly uh, neural network codes. And they go really a, an awful lot faster as a result of that. So um, how is it possible to do AI in those tiny microcontrollers and, and what is it for? Well. Really, the, the, the three main use cases we see that are absolutely taking off are the three Vs. So we have uh, vibration, we have voice, and we have vision. So vibration, this is smart monitoring of industrial devices. Uh, voice, obviously, uh, more and more enabled devices, you know, the sort of uh, Alexa voice assistants and things like that. And vision, of course, uh, we perceive so much of the world through what we see, and smart devices will be doing the same thing. Now on Cortex-M, uh, we're already seeing uh, people implementing uh, significant capabilities uh, on the existing devices today. What we're doing is we're announcing some future uh, extensions which will make those devices even more powerful in the future. Future extensions? So yes. it's like in the next generation yep. of microcontrollers? Next generation design. of Cortex-M-based microcontrollers, yes. So uh, the microcontrollers, uh, the, those uh, a, uh, V8M, is not just about the security, it's also some other stuff like AI. Security is incredibly important. As, as our endpoint devices get more and more uh, powerful, then it is clearly the case that there is more and more data there that we want to secure. If you're enabling these devices access to your extremely personal information, uh, then you will want to know that that data is being kept secure. So we believe the uh, combination of the ARM architecture and these new extensions, together with the platform system architecture we've announced some time ago, uh, the security manifesto, all of this together makes ARM the platform of choice for these endpoint devices. So V8M, as far as I remember, is like two and a half years ago was something announced. That's about right, So yep. uh, how, how has it been the adoption so far? Uh, you're seeing um, Cortex-M uh, microcontrollers coming out. Uh, now you're seeing the silicon coming out based on those devices and of course there are more to come. So the M23 and M33 are very popular? Yes, yes. So just to give, put, you know, throw a few numbers around just to give you some idea of this. We believe we've got about 45 billion chips shipped containing Cortex M based microcontrollers. That's an awful lot of silicon. But most of those are not V8M. That's the newest of the newest, right? Um, that is, yes. Um, what are they? 
I don't know the breakdown of those, so I couldn't say, but, but a, a very large proportion. V8 uh, in the microcontrollers has been around for some time. And I was just looking at the press conferences recently uh, with Qualcomm and the use, people using the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 that talking about 7 trillion transistors on the smartphone. Yep. So what's, what's the latest with the AI and the smartphones? So pretty much all, well, actually all smartphones I know of, the premium smartphones, have announced that they are including neural network accelerators in those chips. Uh, machine learning is very much uh, a use case that is finding a home in those new smartphones uh, and we're only really beginning to see those use cases take off. I mean everyone's doing smart you know face unlock and smart identification fingerprint identification things like that but in addition to that we're seeing a whole bunch of use cases kick off once you have downloadable applications which are utilizing these features. So we're seeing lots of awesome stuff, especially with the camera, but lots of awesome stuff. Yep. But is it is it maybe true that we aren't seeing enough yet? There's potentially lots more that oh, there's way more. it's just yeah. imagination is Absolutely. You just need to imagine we're it. Just limited by our, our imagination. But yes, if you look at the machine learning use cases applied to smart video cameras, uh, people being able to give instructions to their video camera using voice. You know, zoom in on that guy, uh, blur out the background, you know, that sort of thing. Um, huge use cases for machine learning. All right.